Hey guys, so I'm back, and yeah, this is my first vlog-ish type vid of 2020, and I wanted to start the year off right by actually listening to one of your comments for a change. Yeah, getting the video idea out, because people give me suggestions from time to time, and sometimes I'm able to do them, especially if they're song requests, but a lot of the time I just can't get around to it, you know what I mean? So, this comment was from Ashura Zhong, and... It was, hey Matthew, big fan here, been subbed for a bit ever since that anxiety cover from Black Bear. I was wondering if you could do a tutorial on how you mix your vocals. I love the vibe of your songs and it has inspired me to make some of my own gym. So yeah, I had to record a song today for like a job type thing. And yeah, so I just recorded these vocals. These are raw, Wrong the raw audio. To leave. He'll miss the days of you and me, but it's too late for it yeah, but, um, to be. Yeah, so that's the, that's the dry. I just recorded that into there, and here it is with the rest of the track. But yeah, so I wanted to talk about my vocal chain specifically. So here I am in Logic. I'm going to start out with a layer of Waves tune from Waves, and I just set the speed to zero, and I play around with the note transition. I was actually starting this before I realized this would be a good opportunity to do this video, so that's why I have my settings sort of there, but... And then, I set that quantization to B minor, because that's the key of the song that I'm writing. And I've gotten better at singing over the years, so like, at this point I don't have to do any flex tuning, or flex pitch, at least not yet. But yeah, so that's my waves tune. I'm gonna open up the stock Logic EQ, because I want to use sort of the basic plugins for now. Cutting out some of my low end. Free on our own, find our freedom alone, turn this house to a home, because he couldn't stay, but maybe he'll say, where's your go? I just did a bit of a high cut, I mean, sorry, a high boost, mid boost, and low boost, and then a big low cut, and basically I just sort of listen for how I want the sound to be popped out. What I found is normally you don't have to do something too drastic or dramatic to get the result that you want especially if you've got your bass recording down right in a quiet environment and you're using a good mic and you're a clear distance from the mic, you know? Who's now it's time for a little compression. Say? I like this uh, this compressor from Waves, our, our compressor, so it's in mono right now. I'll set my threshold like pretty, pretty high just because I can see that I was getting kind of dynamic in this waveform. And we had to learn how to Set my attack to how I sort of feel like that should be working. Same with the release. And ratio for vocals is normally good to do it around 3.5 to 5. I've got mine a little low right now, 2.4, just because I don't want to have my compression going that strong. Because I'm sort of following the dynamics of where I want the arrangement to go in the track. And yeah, just some gain at the end to level that out. And now I'll put on some reverb. So this is one of my favorite stock reverbs from Logic called Space Designer. It's great. It's got a lot of uh, different parameters in it that you can mess with. But first of all, set the wet up high so I can tell how I want the room to be. So. And the reason I have the wet up so high to start with is so I can sort of hear where I want the room to be changing with my other settings, pre-delay, length, and size. And then once I have that right, I move the wet down to the actual reverb level. And then I go to my output EQ, cut out some of the lows on that reverb, just because you don't really, in my opinion, you don't need those low frequencies on reverb. Not the lowest ones, at least. Long ago, really so long ago. Yeah. We could have been a fairy tale, but I like I'm gonna put this on just because uh, I normally do it. This is called sibilance, it's also from Waves. I don't really think my sibilance, or S, S sounds and P sounds, popping sounds, it's uh, I don't think it's too strong on this track, but I'm gonna put on my basic chain anyway, with the sibilance. And this one's, this plugin's really nice because you can see exactly what it's doing, how it's working. Because he couldn't stay, but maybe he'll say, 
Where she go, the little girl? And now I'm going to put on a noise gate to make sure that I can filter out all of the volume, like the room noise where I'm not talking, that I don't want. Hey, but it's too late for it to be. Cause he went away. And we had to learn yeah, so I think that's working out nicely. Free, noise gate is real simple. Own, You've got your threshold, and at, once you set your threshold, any sound below that threshold will be cut off completely, and anything above it will come through completely normal. So, noise gates are really good. And there you have a six plugin, extremely effective here. So here's here's without. Learn how to be free, free. It's a good dry vocal, and then. Find our freedom alone. Turn this house to a home because he couldn't stay, but maybe he'll say, Where she go? But yeah, so I still have to finish the song, but hopefully this video helped you guys sort of understand how I process my vocals, at least at the start. This is most of my chain. Sometimes I add different other effects depending on what you specifically want the vocal to be doing. For example, like telephone EQs or big reverb washes or things like that. But yeah, anyway, thank you and have a good day. Peace, peace. Uh, whatever. whatever.